Hello again. Okay, continuing with our study on Genesis chapter 49, we will now take a look at Simeon and Levi, or Simon and Levi. Simeon and Simon is the same name. Um, Simeon is the Hebrew rendition of it, and Simon is the Greek and English rendition of it. It's the same name. All right, so where to begin? So we will begin by showing how they were named. They were the first, uh, the second and third sons born to Jacob through Leah. The first son was Reuben, whom we covered in the previous video. And she named Reuben because... Um, Jacob loved her younger sister more than he loved her. She named him Reuben, which means see you a son. And she said, because the Lord has looked upon my affliction and now my husband will love me. So then Simeon was born. And Simeon means hearing. And she named him that because she said, the Lord has heard that I was hated, and he has given me this son also. And then the third son was named Levi, which means attached. And she said, my husband will be joined to me because I have borne him three sons. And then, of course, the fourth one was Judah, which means celebrated. And she said, now I will praise the Lord. So she had given up on Jacob. Um, now... So these um, sons, Simeon and Levi, are, I guess you could almost say, born out of frustration. Like she was very frustrated with her marriage, right? And I think you'll see that theme in the Bible quite a bit where the, the woman's temperament during the pregnancy is very important for, um, for how the whole thing turns out. So, that's the first thing to learn about Simeon and Levi. And then the next event that happened. Now, in this video, there is a lot of information on both Levi and Simeon. Um, for this video, we're going to take a look at the two actual men in the book of Genesis, Simeon and Levi and what the book of Genesis actually has to say about them, because that is very important. That is the, the initial foundation that the rest of the concepts are built upon when studying these two. So, we went over how they were named. And now we'll skip ahead to the events in their lives in the book of Genesis. Okay, so the next event regarding these two is in Genesis chapter 34. Okay, this is important to understand this part. Now, Dinah was the youngest girl born to Leah. Um, Leah eventually bore Jacob six sons and then a girl, and her name was Dinah, and her name means justice. Uh, Leah didn't give any reason for naming Dinah justice. It can Im be implied by the names of her other children, because she was competing with her sister, and she was very jealous of her sister. So that she bore two more sons when they were having com competitions with having babies for Jacob. And then her daughter was named Justice. I suppose that implies that after I've won all of this fight over having more babies, then that's Justice. Okay. So, starting in chapter 34, verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land, 
Um, okay, let's set up the the context of this. Uh, Jacob had just come back from um, Haman and back into the land of Canaan. And he had met up with Izu. He had wrestled with God and received the name Israel. And then he settled in Shechem. He bought land from the king of Shechem, the Canaanite king. Uh, starting in verse 19 of chapter 33, at the very end of chapter 33, he says, And he bought a parcel of a field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of money. And he erected there an altar and called it El Elohe Israel, which means the God of God Almighty of Israel. Okay, so, um, so Dinah went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite prince of the country, a Hivite is one of the Canaanite tribes, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spoke kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spoke unto his father Hamar, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. So Shechem was the name of the prince, and Hamar was his father. And the town they lived in was called Shechem. And Jacob heard that he had defiled his daughter Dinah. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they came. And Hamar, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field, and when they heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wrought folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Hamar communed with them, saying, the soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. I pray you give her him to wife. And make you marriage with us, and give your daughters to us, and take our daughters to you. And you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade you therein, and get you possessions therein. And Shechem said unto her father and to her brothers, let me find grace in your eyes, and what you shall say unto me I will give. Ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give according as you shall say to me, but give me the damsel to wife. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamar his father deceitfully, and said, Because he had defiled Dinah, Dinah their sister, and they said to them, we cannot do this thing, to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that were a reproach to us. But in this we will consent to you, if you will be as we, that every male of you be circumcised. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. And if you will not hearken to us to be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and we will be gone. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. And the young man deferred not to do the thing, because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. And Hamor and Shechem his son came to the gate of their city and communed with the men of their city, saying, These men are peaceable with us. Therefore let them dwell in the land and trade therein for the land. Behold, it is large enough for them, and let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only herein will the men consent unto us for to, to dwell with us, to be one people, if every male among us be circumcised as they are circumcised. Shall not their cattle and their substance and every beast of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. 
And unto Hamor and unto Shechem his son hearkened all that went out of the gate of the city, and every male was circumcised, all that went out of the gate of the city. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. And the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which was in the city and that which was in the field and all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives took they captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me to make me distinct among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, Should he deal with our sister as with a harlot? So that's the story of what Simeon and Levi did. So there's a lot here about... I can look at this a bit in hindsight and make some judgments about uh, what they did. What they did was circumcision was a right given to Abraham that every male of Israel shall be circumcised. So they made a deal and deceitfully made a deal with these people. Even though these people had wronged them and the guy asked for... uh, if I can have grace in your sight. And he did everything. I don't think he actually raped Dinah. I think he just uh, made a girlfriend out of her and had sex with her and and fell in love with her without any consent from her family and um, without any knowledge of their customs or anything. And he had her in his house and he loved her. So... It doesn't really say anything about how Dinah felt about all of this. But the, the, the man who took her doesn't seem to have been, um, have taken her by force. So he agreed to do all of, everything they wanted. He offered to give them anything they wanted. And he agreed to get circumcised. And not only him but the father also who was the king of the city and also every man in the city they all agreed to do this to enter into this agreement to become part of israel this was uh the deal or that they would become part of israel and their motives were to have another gene pool and maybe to have some more possessions and you know uh maybe get some cows out of the deal somehow. So, but they were willing to do this and their heart was in the right place. Like maybe the son had made a mistake with Dinah, but, and maybe their custom was like that. So he really didn't know he was doing anything wrong. And they had all agreed to do this. So they were all acting in good faith, the whole town. And Simeon and Levi took advantage of their weakness when they were circumcised and killed them all. Not only did they kill them all, but they took all their cows, they took their daughters, they, they, they spoiled the whole city and took everything that they, that they could. So they could take their daughters and kill them, but they can't take their sister and love her. So there's a a great hypocrisy going on here and a great um, deception using the sacred oracles of God to deceive people into becoming a part of God's people in order to murder them. Like that's a a very serious offense, uh, what they did. Now, their reason being that they were protecting the honor of their sister. 
but I guess the punishment is far, far greater than the crime in this case. And it says a lot about who Simeon and Levi are. So let's look further and see what else it has to say about these two. Okay, the next one is uh, Genesis chapter 42, verse 16 and 17. Now this is uh, the part, there's nothing else about Jacob and Levi before this here in Genesis chapter 42, when Jacob sent, uh, Joseph had become a leader in Egypt, and Jacob sent his sons during the famine for the first time to go buy corn in Egypt. And they ran into Joseph, and they didn't know who he was. And he accused them of being spies. And Joseph took, where is it, uh, 16 and 17. I'll just read it. Uh, starting in verse 16, Send one of you and let him fetch your brother, and you shall be kept in prison that your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. And he put them all together in a ward for three days. And Joseph said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear God. If you be true men, let one of your brothers be bound in the house of your prison, Go you and carry corn for the famine of your houses, but bring your youngest brother to me, so your words should, would be verified, and you shall not die. And they did so. And they said to one another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore this distress is upon us. So they're saying this is happening to us because... We sold Joseph, and he even begged us not to do it. And Reuben, Reuben answered them, saying, Spoke I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child? And then, uh, and they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spoke to them by an interpreter. And then he turned himself about from them and wept, and returned to them again and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. So, he kept Simeon. This is interesting. We'll talk about this later. Okay, and then Genesis uh, chapter 42, verse 36. When they come back to Jacob, their father, without Simeon. And he says, Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me of my children. Joseph is not. Simeon is not. And you will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. So we have uh, Benjamin, Joseph, and Simeon all in uh, this group together. Genesis chapter 46, verse 10. It uh, lists out the sons of Simeon. And it's just listing out the uh, family tree. Simeon had six sons. The first one was Jemuel, which means day of God. Jemuel. And the second one was Jamin, which is the right hand side. And the third one was Ohad, which means unity. And the fourth one is Jakin, which means it will be established. And then the fifth one is Zohar, which means whiteness. And the sixth one is Shal, which means asked. Asked. Shal, the last son, was the son of a Canaanite woman. I wonder if it was one of the women that Simeon took from the city when they slaughtered them. It also lists out in Genesis chapter 46, verse 11, it lists out the sons of Levi. Levi had three sons. The first one is named Gershon, which means driven out or driven away like a, ref like a refugee. Uh, the second one may is Kohath, which means allied. 
and the third one is named Merari, which means bitter. So I guess uh, it would just be speculation to try to speculate what those names all have a deeper meaning towards. But for now, we'll just sort of leave that on the table. We just did a video about Genesis chapter 48 was when um, Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, were given the birthright and, and made the first and second born of Israel. And uh, Reuben and Simeon were the first and second born through Leah. They lost their birthright. And it was given to Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's two sons. So the reason why is our next look is Genesis chapter 49, verse 5. Uh, this is the, where Jacob blesses the 12 sons. And uh, he blessed Reuben, which we covered in our last video. And now here he turns to Simeon and Levi, and he puts them together. He, he gives them both the same prophecy. He says, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. O oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret. Under their assembly, my honor, be not thou united. So he's saying, don't be a part of their secret, and don't be a part of their assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. So what does he mean by dig down a wall? Um, the rite of circumcision was a wall, that set apart Israel from everyone else. And in their self-will, they didn't ask Jacob what he thought. They just did this whole deception on their own. And it was their idea, nobody else's. And digging, what happens when you dig under a wall? The wall collapses. It's, it's called undermining a wall. So they undermined the circumcision rite. Uh, the separate, what separates um, Israel from other nations is the circumcision. So when these Canaanites became circumcised, they actually became a part of Israel. They made them a part of Israel to trick them and kill them. So they actually killed a part of Israel. This is what he means by they dug down a wall. They, they undermined a wall and the wall collapsed. Okay. And then he goes on and he says, cursed be their anger for it was fierce. It was way more than the crime and their wrath for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Divide them in Jacob and scatter them. So to divide them is to, you know, split them in two. But to scatter is like to sow. You're, you're scattering on all over the place. You're, it's like sowing seeds. So, in Jacob they will be divided, and in Israel they will be scattered. So we're going to go on and study. We're going to have to make a few more videos about this. Because we're, uh, Levi is a huge topic in the Old Testament. And Simeon is a big topic in the New Testament. And... So I think this has something to do when he's saying, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Because when you are seeing the difference between Jacob and Israel, prophetically speaking, 
you could make the argument that it, we're talking about Old Testament times and New Testament times. And it seems to be the case with these two sons, the, the, the children of these sons, or these two namesakes. Simeon is very, there's very little information about Simeon in the Old Testament, but there's an awful lot about Simon in the New Testament. And there's very little information about Levi in the New Testament, but there's a ton of it in the Old Testament. So we're going to start with Levi and get that out of the way. And then we can carry on with a study about Simeon and how that fits into this. So we'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Just smash the like button if you're so inclined, if you're enjoying this series. Thank you.